Imagine a world where death is no longer an inevitable end. A future where science and technology doesn't just help save lives, but extends them indefinitely. That sounds like a sci-fi dream, but the truth is this future might not be as far as you think. From merging the human brain to machines to artificial intelligence revolutionizing healthcare and cutting-edge cancer treatment, the boundaries between life and death are shifting faster than we know it. To start our journey into immortality, we need to find a way to transcend the limitations of our biology. And one of the best ways to do this is to merge with machines. You know, a monkey has been able to control the computer with its brain. Just, yeah. So your brain is composed of neurons. Neurons connect together and form a network that can talk to each other through synapses. They're the connection points between neurons, and they communicate using chemical signals, known as neurotransmitters. All of your senses, everything you experience in life, it's all just neurons firing, electrical signals, or otherwise known as action potentials. When neuron spikes occur, these neurotransmitters are released. Information is then relayed across its synapses, and eventually reaches another neuron. Now multiply this process by 100 billion, and that's your brain in a nutshell. Electrodes are the way that Neuralink and other medical practices study your brain activity. By placing these electrodes close to neurons, the action potentials that create electric fields inside your brain can be detected and transferred to a machine that records and measures the data. Neuralink plans to use this to its advantage. Your brain has two main systems, your limbic system and your cortex. These two are in a relationship with each other. Your limbic system is responsible for your basic emotions, your survival instinct. Your cortex is responsible for your problem-solving skills, your critical thinking. It's where your consciousness exists. Neuralink is aiming to create a third layer to this. The implants would be a third wheel in this relationship, but would increase our capabilities by multiple orders of magnitude. They plan to increase the number of neurons that you can access regularly, that you can use to remember things or regain access to certain parts of your brain that may no longer be active. This is extremely useful for medical patients, some of which who had absolutely zero options up until Neuralink became a reality. The goal is to make this one of the most simple procedures there is, similar to people getting LASIK to improve their vision. But why do we even need this in the first place? Well, in most cases, it's a bandwidth issue. Now many people hear this, but don't exactly understand what that means. It's a speed problem, it's an energy problem. It's how fast you can get information into or out of your brain. If you have something that you want to write down on a computer, you have to type it with your hands, or speak it into a microphone that's probably going to mess it up. If you want to learn something, it could take days, weeks, months, or even years to fully grasp. If we were able to solve this bandwidth issue, we could accomplish exponentially more in less time with much less physical effort. Neuralink cuts out the middleman and allows input and output directly from your brain to whatever you're doing on a machine, or vice versa. It's like going from writing using a quill, to having a pencil, to having a keyboard, to having Siri, to now potentially having nothing but the power of your own brain. This is where brain-machine interfaces come in, and they change everything. A brain-machine interface, or BMI, is composed of two things, a brain and a machine. The machine could be anything, a phone, a computer, a bionic arm, anything that provides you with sensory inputs from the outside world or an external source. These inputs are then returned back into your brain, where you can process them. But you need something artificial in your head to return this data to. Now don't worry, it's not like putting a CPU inside your head. It's actually quite tiny. Each Neuralink N1 chip is roughly 4x4mm with 1000 electrodes each. It's feasible to fit up to 10 of these inside your head in different areas, all to measure and affect different parts of your brain. But companies and neurosurgeons alike can't just go around throwing anything they want into someone's head. It's usually a lengthy process to getting these things approved by the FDA for medical purposes and later on public use. BMIs contain the potential to help people with a wide range of clinical disorders. Using just 256 electrodes, or about 2.5% the number of electrodes Neuralink eventually plans to use, human patients have been able to control computer cursors, robotic limbs, and speech synthesizers. The full potential with nearly 40 times that amount of electrodes is hard to imagine. Currently, the best FDA-approved BMI is used for Parkinson's patients, and it only has 10 electrodes. For Neuralink, this is just the beginning, and it's already a thousand times better than what is currently approved. In version 1. Each electrode is inserted into your head via tiny threads that are roughly 5 micrometers thick. They're around 10 times smaller than a human hair and contain 32 electrodes each. 
It's roughly the same size as a neuron, which is a good idea. There's a size limit for things that you want to stick in your head. Something too large is inevitably going to cause problems, so the smaller, the better. Neuralink actually made a robot that is used to insert these with extreme precision, which is pretty much mandatory. Humans couldn't do it if they wanted. This is a penny. It's pretty small, right? It's roughly the same size as the tip of my thumb. Now, zooming in extremely close, this right here is the needle that will be inserted into your skull. Placing it beside a penny, you actually couldn't see it. As the robot inserts each thread one by one, at the end, there could eventually be up to 10,000 of these electrodes inside your head, each responsible for recording separate neurons which can later on be analyzed. But not only can they read data from your brain, they can also input data as well. It's a two-way street. It's sort of like being able to upload and download things from your brain. Brain implants aren't exactly new either, though. They go as far back as the 1950s. Hearing implants are a good example. Neuralink just plans to take the baton and continue down the path, but in a different way. Other BMIs approach the situation differently. For deep brain stimulation, the kind of implants that were used to assist Parkinson's patients that I mentioned before, they essentially used larger stiff needles that were pretty much just shoved into the brain to affect neural activity, just as the electrodes from Neuralink will. It works well, but there's a pretty high probability that complications will occur over time. Seizures, strokes, and even more. It may fix one issue, but it's probable that multiple other issues will show up. See, your brain doesn't sit still inside your head, it moves around with you. Even if you think you're sitting still, your brain moves with each breath, each heartbeat. This is what can cause issues, and is why a robot is needed for Neuralink's procedure to be successful. Neuralink is taking a different approach, and it really isn't even a huge surgery. Your head isn't going to be completely peeled open for these chips to be inserted. Each chip will be inserted into your head through a small incision of 8mm at most, so less than a centimeter. You won't need stitches, you won't need any of that. It's hardly a surgery at all. By the way, those chips that are inserted are completely wireless, as you would probably hope. The craziest thing of all is that you won't need to go to a hospital or random place to hook yourself up to use this interface. There's no USB port sticking out of your head, you won't need a caretaker or anyone to help you. With the use of a single wireless battery powered computer behind your ear, it will actually be able to connect you to your smartphone, effectively making your phone an official part of you. The options and potentials for this technology is limitless, and it's only going to improve over time. Now, I don't want to overreach here and throw out ideas that are impossible, so I won't. But I will give some solid uses and some pretty cool ideas for Neuralink that can actually become a reality one day. This is my computer. Ironside sent it to me a couple months back, and it is great for everything I need to do. It has a 2080 Ti graphics card, an i9 processor, and 64GB of RAM. I can edit much faster and more efficiently than I was able to before. I can play pretty much any game on ultra settings. But in order to do these things, I need to use my hands. Well, duh. I need to use a mouse and a keyboard to get things done in the way I want, or to move my character in games. But Neuralink may be able to change this. If a patient is able to control an arm with his or her mind, then it's not unfeasible to believe that, one day, you may be able to control characters in video games with your brain as well. Considering it's all Bluetooth, all wireless, it's not too much of a stretch to ask. This, coupled with advancements in virtual reality, will cause video games, and potentially even films, to become almost fully immersive. Let's take an example of where Neuralink technology could be used in a pretty cool yet practical way. Let's say you're about to take a month-long trip to Tokyo. You're an American, and as most Americans, most of us only speak one language. We'll have no clue how to get around any city that doesn't have street signs or directions completely in English. But luckily, Neuralink can help us out here. Imagine there's a Tokyo local who's lived there his entire life. Looking at the action potentials of that particular person, studying their neuron spikes in a region of their brain called the hippocampus, and in which order they occur, you can trace out a path throughout the entire city from when these neurons spike. And once this data is input into your brain, you'll be able to traverse the city like you've lived there your entire life. Telepathy is no longer unrealistic. The electrode implants that detect neural signals wirelessly transmit their data back to the small computer behind your ear. So, the idea of transferring data back and forth between these devices is relatively simple to imagine. And because the electrodes can both read and write data, you could theoretically communicate back and forth between people who also have Neuralink implants. 
Now at the moment, the technology isn't exactly close to making this happen. Maybe a word or two. But in theory, and with enough improvements, it is possible for high bandwidth communication between two people using nothing but their minds. It may be an aggressive approach, as Elon tends to take, but you can see Neuralink implants in human patients by the end of this year. And once that happens, it's only up from there. Improvements will slowly be added, and I can honestly see this becoming a big and common practice within the next couple of decades. You always hear that there's new technology coming out that will change our lives, but I'm serious when I say this. If this is taken seriously and can work in the ways we're studying and planning on at the moment, I see this as an invention that is on the scale of the internet. It will change the world the way airplanes impacted travel, the way antibiotics impacted medicine. Computers and the internet threw us into a brand new digital age. Phones and computers have become extensions of human beings. They can answer almost any question you could ask at a moment's notice. They've both been pivotal in connecting the entire planet. BMIs like the one Neuralink are creating are going to have a similar and honestly even larger effect than that. As time goes on, as we enter a new decade, technology that we've passed off as unrealistic becomes more and more plausible. Things that we've written off as impossible end up being the same things that push society forward. Airplanes, rockets, medicine, all things that used to be seen as wizardry or some voodoo magic, are now things that we use every single day. As Neuralink progresses and gets better and better, its cultural impact will grow larger and larger. Kids being born today will grow up in a world vastly different than the one we're living in today, the same way that we're living through a time vastly different than the previous generations. We will make mistakes along the way. The past shows that pretty well. However, humans overcome. We adapt, and we move forward. If you think we're living in the peak of the digital age, you have no idea what's just around the corner. Today is Neuralink, tomorrow we could be uploading consciousness and achieving digital immortality. But while Neuralink pushes the boundaries of what our minds can achieve, the quest for immortality doesn't stop there. To truly overcome the limitations of the human body, we need to address one of its greatest vulnerabilities, cancer. For years we've heard about all the breakthroughs in cancer therapies and now, thanks to groundbreaking innovations, that same revolutionary spirit is taking on AL amyloidosis a condition as complex and life-threatening as cancer. Today, I've partnered with a company called MX Biopharma to help bring awareness to the condition and the unbelievable work they're doing to fight it. If you've never heard of it before, AL amyloidosis is a life-threatening disease caused by abnormal plasma cells in the bone marrow. This disease leads to the buildup of harmful proteins in critical organs like the heart, kidneys, and liver. It's a condition that robs patients of energy, breath, and often hope as they face long diagnostic delays and limited treatment options. But MX Biopharma is working to stop this condition in its tracks with a single transformative treatment called NXC201, a cutting edge CAR T cell therapy. This is more than just a treatment, it's a living medicine. MX Biopharma genetically modifies a patient's cells to re-educate them, teaching them to seek out and destroy the disease cells. Unlike temporary solutions like pills, this is a one-time treatment option where the cells keep fighting until they've eliminated the problem. Other CAR T therapies that have shown promise come with significant risks like neurotoxicity, but NXC201 has achieved something remarkable. A 75% complete response rate in clinical trials, with no reported neurotoxicity. It's a therapy designed to treat and potentially cure patients, offering them hope for a real recovery. And now, through the next CAR 2 trial, MX Biopharma is bringing this life-changing therapy to the US. This is a glimpse into a future where conditions once thought incurable are met with bold, innovative solutions. MX Biopharma is on a mission to rewrite the rules, not just for AL amyloidosis, but for cancer and beyond. Visit the link in the description to learn about their fight to transform lives. Also, check out their Be Proactive in AL initiative, which promotes early diagnosis and educates patients on available treatment options. The world is full of deadly diseases that are constantly evolving, so we must evolve our treatment options too, if we want to stand a chance against them. But some of the most creative solutions might not come from humans at all. Around 1 in 5 people around the world will develop cancer in their lifetime, with 1 in 9 men and 1 in 12 women dying from the disease. Basically, for every 6 people that die around the world, one of them dies from cancer. Cancer is one of the scariest things in the world, and rightfully so. It's said that if you live long enough, cancer will inevitably come for you. It's no surprise that our society has been trying to find a cure for cancer, basically since we knew what it was. 
With artificial intelligence, we stand a better chance than ever in this war against cancer. This is how AI is transforming healthcare. In a recent study, researchers from the University of Toronto and in Silico Medicine used a computer program called AlphaFold, along with a tool called Pharma.ai, to speed up the design and synthesis of a drug that could potentially treat hepatocellular carcinoma, the most common type of primary liver cancer. The AI tool found a new target to attack the cancer and a molecule that would stick to that target. This molecule could be included in a new cancer treatment drug. The researchers completed all of this in just 30 days. Now imagine what they could do with more time and more powerful AI tools. We're still at the early stages with tools like AlphaFold, and the problem is that cancer isn't just one thing. It's not just one disease like the flu, it's a multitude of diseases requiring different treatment plans and cures. But scientists have realized that, right now, our best chance at fighting cancer is being able to diagnose it as early as possible. This is where we can see just how incredible artificial intelligence can be. Last year I went to Japan, and while in Tokyo I went to a pastry shop with seemingly endless supplies of pastries. There were pies, cakes, sandwiches, croissants, anything you could ever want. When I picked up everything I wanted, I went up to the register, put all my pastries on the counter, and what I thought was the cash register fired up these green lights that scanned all my pastries. The screen then displayed everything I bought and how much I owed. This was one of the more subtle tech things I had seen in Japan and so I didn't think anything of it. A couple months ago, I read an article titled, The AI Pastry Scanner That's Fighting Cancer, and that's when it struck me that it wasn't just a cash register, it was an AI used to recognize all the different types of pastries I bought, and now that same AI that was designed for bakeries is being used to diagnose cancer. A doctor at Kyoto's Louis Pasteur Center for Medical Research discovered that some cancer cells look almost exactly like donuts under a microscope, so he contacted the team that created the AI bakery scanner, and Cyto AI Scan was born. Today, the cancer diagnosing AI can identify cancerous urinary cells with up to 99% accuracy. The same technology is also being used to differentiate pills and locate problems in mechanical engineering. Artificial intelligence has taken over our world in the past couple of years. ChatGPT got a million users in five days, and its parent company, OpenAI, has just taken the world by storm again after releasing Sora, their text to video AI platform. This platform has gotten even the best video creators in the world worried. However, what we don't often hear about, because it's not as exciting, is what AI is doing in the world of healthcare. According to Harvard School of Public Health, using AI to make diagnoses can reduce treatment costs by up to 50% while increasing health outcomes by 40%, so you're getting much better care at half the price. In one study, US, German, and French researchers used AI to scan more than 100,000 images to identify skin cancer. They found they got better results than the 58 international dermatologists who were given a similar test. Several studies have also shown that AI is already better at spotting malignant tumors than the best radiologists in the world. When you consider that artificial intelligence is only going to get better, you can see why those in this field of research are excited. In many areas across the globe, there aren't enough physicians to meet the population's needs. Researchers in the field of medical technology believe that AI can be used to fill this gap. Imagine a world where anyone, with just an internet connection, can access health information quickly and conveniently. And no, I'm not talking about googling your symptoms only to be told you have cancer. Google researchers have developed an experimental diagnostic AI called AMI, Articulate Medical Intelligence Explorer, that aims to replicate the feeling of talking to your doctor through a large language model. You provide your symptoms through the text chat interface and AMI asks you questions and gives you treatment recommendations based on your answers just like any human doctor would. Researchers behind Amy claim that it outperforms clinicians in diagnostic accuracy and performance. If you understand how LLMs work, this isn't surprising. We've already talked about how good AI is at identifying patterns with medical imaging, and it's the same thing here, just with disease symptoms. Right now, Amy is still experimental and has limitations, but this gives us a glimpse into the future. What is available right now, though, is AI transforming the administrative tasks in the world of healthcare. When we think of healthcare, we often think of talking to a doctor, getting surgery, and grabbing meds from the pharmacy, but what we don't often think about is all the administrative work that goes on behind the scenes to make our experience of going to the hospital as seamless as possible. Today, the average nurse in the United States spends 25% of their work time on regulatory and administrative activities. Through research, the main thing I've realized is that AI isn't here to replace doctors and other medical health professionals, at least not in the near future. 
Right now, the most impactful thing AI can do is to help with things like these administrative tasks. The more mundane and monotonous side of healthcare that we don't really like to think about, to allow the human physicians the time and mental capacity to perform more complex tasks. One of the biggest challenges the healthcare industry faces is us, the patients. You see, there's only so much a doctor can do with the limited time they see you in the hospital. The bulk of the work that goes into keeping you healthy has to be done by you. Research has shown that the more patients proactively take care of themselves, the better the outcome of their treatment. The problem though is that many people don't have the required knowledge or willpower to follow through with the plans and make the behavioral changes necessary to improve their health. Thankfully, this is another area in which AI can help. Machine learning can be used to personalize care to a level that would be impossible for a human physician. A machine will also be there 24-7 and can implement things like message alerts and timely checkups to ensure patients are sticking to their treatment plans. Right now, ChatGPT is being used to help patients with diabetes better understand their diagnosis and treatment options. Researchers have also found that it can help them monitor their symptoms and adherence to treatment, provide feedback and encouragement, and answer their questions. ChatGPT and other similar tools can also be used to rewrite the treatment plan that's been prescribed by medical professionals into different reading levels and possibly languages. This reduces the barrier of entry for the patient to understand what they need to do and empowers everyone, regardless of education level, to take better control of their health. There is a concern with using AI in healthcare though, and that's the data. Who gets access to your healthcare data? How much more information do we want to give Silicon Valley tech companies about ourselves and our health? The infamous Golden State Killer was caught decades after his crimes through an open source DNA database. He never submitted his DNA, but investigators linked crime scene samples to the DNA of his extended family. There's been other cases where criminals have been caught in a similar way, and you might say this is a good thing, and it is, but where do we draw the line? Today it's used to catch criminals who got away, tomorrow it might be used to catch peaceful protesters whose only crime is disagreeing with the government of the day. There's also the issue of insurance companies using this health information to inflate insurance prices for people predisposed to certain illnesses. We would have to fix these issues before we can dream of a world where AI and doctors work hand in glove to save lives. And to be honest, that future is incredible when you envision it, because even if a world where you'll be completely attended to by an AI doctor is still a fair distance away, or even might never come, the world today is already filled with amazing tools that are pushing the needle of medical care forward. At least for now, there are some things humans will always be better at than AI. Things like dealing with complex or otherwise sensitive information like mental health issues, chronic illnesses, and end of care life. AI also has to still pass the hurdle of trust, because if the public doesn't trust AI, it won't be able to help them with their health effectively. It has mixed results. On the one hand, some studies show that people do trust AI for things like diagnosis, treatment, and monitoring, with around 80% of Americans willing to use these tools to help manage their health. On the other hand, 60% of people in the same study were uncomfortable with healthcare providers relying on AI for medical care. So there's still some work to be done in building public trust. That's what companies like MedBright hope to achieve with their AI tool, to build trust in technology by making the hospital and human clinicians easier to access and better equipped to do their jobs. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, algorithms, whatever name you decided to call them, these tools are transforming our world at a much faster pace than we ever could have imagined. We talk a lot about the dangers of AI, but the truth is in the right hands, artificial intelligence can do incredible things. Who knows, maybe one day it'll help us find the cure for cancer, but even if it doesn't, we at least know it'll help us find it before any human can. From acting as individual caregivers to offering solutions to broader societal issues, here is how AI is going to save our world in ways that we never imagined. But it's not just about curing diseases, AI is helping us dream bigger. What if these technologies weren't just reactive, but proactive, saving humanity in ways we never imagined? The first ultra-intelligent machine is the last invention that man need ever make. The statement was made by mathematician Irving John Goode in 1965. He was envisioning a machine smarter than any human who had ever lived, one that would design even smarter machines and leave humans in the dust. Now, while we haven't created an ultra-intelligent machine, we have successfully created something that could end our species, but if used correctly, could also save us. In the history of our species, we've been remarkably skilled at inventing and using tools to further our civilization. 
from the stone axes and spears of our ancestors to steam engines and computers, the knowledge and intuition used to create these tools has allowed us to improve the quality of our lives tremendously. Today we stand on the precipice of a new invention, artificial intelligence. The next chapter in our story, but unlike the tools of the past, AI could do both harm and good. So what if we invented the wheel but didn't know how to use it? So what if the light bulb was never imagined? If these inventions failed, the most likely outcome is that our civilization would probably just continue the status quo. But with the addition of AI, things are about to change. On the one hand, a sentient AI, if that's even a possibility, could dethrone humans as the smartest species on Earth and try to take over the planet for its own benefit. But if we can harness the power of artificial intelligence and put it to good use, it could potentially save us and the entire planet. This is how AI will save humanity. Just before we talk about the ways AI is already changing our world, I realize that most people don't have problems with AI itself, but with how it's being developed, and I completely understand that, I feel that way as well. To help us prevent Skynet from happening, people like you and me who care about the ethical use of AI need to get into the rooms where these decisions are made, and to do that, we need to start a career in tech. AI has advanced rapidly in recent years, which is why visions of sentient machines taking over the world have been dominating the news cycle. There is, and rightfully so, a lot of criticism surrounding the rapid development of artificial intelligence. We've made several videos talking about the dangers of algorithms and AI tools like ChatGPT right here on the channel, but among all of that, there are a lot of positives that have come with the development of AI, some of which are already revolutionizing our world. Cancer is one of the biggest hurdles we have to face as a species. Research shows that if you live long enough, cancer will eventually kill you if you don't die of something else first. One in two people in the world will develop some form of cancer during their lifetime. The numbers are scary, but they might not be for much longer. Artificial intelligence is helping to advance cancer treatment. By quickly understanding how cancerous cells become resistant to anti-cancer drugs, AI tools can help to massively improve cancer drug development and use. Pharmaceutical companies are using AI to scan through large volumes of data and use predictive analysis to figure out which molecules are best suited for use in medication to fight cancer. And it's not just theory. In a recent study, researchers from the University of Toronto and in Silico Medicine used a computer program called AlphaFold along with a tool called Pharma.ai to find a new way to treat liver cancer. The AI tool found a new target to attack the cancer and also found a molecule that would stick to that target. This molecule could be included in a new cancer treatment drug. The researchers completed all of this in just 30 days, so imagine what they could do with more time and more powerful AI tools. Artificial intelligence is also being used in medical imaging. Analyzing CT scans, x-rays, and MRIs to find lesions or other abnormalities a human radiologist might miss. These are pattern-oriented repetitive tasks, exactly what machines excel at. Even if AI isn't able to assist with critical areas like surgery or specialized care just yet, if it can improve the productivity of medical professionals by two to three times, which is probably a conservative estimate, it might just be that we have a healthcare revolution at our hands. Research shows by the year 2034, there may be a shortage of up to 48,000 primary care physicians. Tools like these might allow us to bridge the gap between the amount of care we require and the number of physicians available to give us that treatment. There was a recent incident where an unknown tick-borne disease on a dog was producing confusing symptoms. The dog's worried owner put the details of its symptoms into GPT-4, which hypothesized what the condition might be. The owner took this information to a second veterinarian, who confirmed one of the probable diagnoses that GPT-4 had suggested. While the puppy still definitely needed to see a real vet, GPT-4 was able to massively speed up the time it took to diagnose the illness. Today the dog has made a full recovery, thanks in part to GPT-4. AI can also assist people with living disabilities by enabling them to live more independently. GPT-4 is being incorporated into apps like Be My Eyes and Virtual Volunteer to help the blind and visually impaired to better interpret the world around them. We also now have nearly accurate real-time captioning software that allows people with a hearing impairment to watch movies, follow along with online classes, or even take calls from loved ones. AI has the potential to create life-changing opportunities for people living with disabilities. It makes it easier to create interactive tools to support both physical and mental accessibility, and to promote independence. Speaking of mental accessibility, mental health issues have been on the rise in recent decades placing a significant burden on individuals, families, and society as a whole. 
AI can be used to assist the creation of diagnostic tools, personalized treatment plans, and even provide virtual therapy through chatbots and other interactive platforms. In fact, this has been a surprising reason why a lot of people have been using ChatGPT lately. It's no wonder that there was a significant drop in the number of posts per day on the Relationship Advice subreddit right after ChatGPT's release. The immediate access, the complete lack of judgment and its creative potential, make ChatGPT an excellent mental health aid. It can help address the shortage of mental health professionals, increase access to care, and reduce any stigma associated with seeking help. Education is another area where the powers of AI could be harnessed to do amazing things. People who are dyslexic have been flocking to Reddit communities to say how ChatGPT has allowed them to learn things at their own pace, something a traditional classroom setting could never provide at scale, and how they wished it had existed before. We've had online classes before, yes, but though they were accessible, the content was never tailored to each person's individual needs. With artificial intelligence tools, you can create that with just one prompt. Of course, there is a trade-off here. Many students have simply started copying and pasting information given to them by AI without actually reading or understanding any of it. People are genuinely worried that this might cause students to lose interest in learning anything. Why bother when they can just ask ChatGPT to spit out the answers to their assignments? But is this the fault of the tool or of our current education system? Let's consider a similar scenario. One of the greatest capabilities of ChatGPT is writing and debugging code. Few might imagine that this would discourage people from learning to code. That is, until you read about the people who have, for the first time in their lives, found a friend, so to speak, who will not only give them examples of good code. ChatGPT can also tell them what mistakes they made and speak to them with a respectful tone as opposed to coding forums that are known to criticize users for asking too obvious questions. I'm a victim of that myself. The potential of AI in education is huge, with its ability to customize learning experiences to individual students and to bridge the gap between well-resourced and under-resourced schools. By identifying and addressing each student's unique needs, strengths, and weaknesses, AI can encourage a more inclusive and effective learning environment, which has the potential to reduce educational inequality. One of the GPT-4 demos included writing the code of a website from a rough drawing on a napkin. Imagine how much power that gives a small business owner to start their own project. Something that previously would have required a lot of money and time can now be done with a few well-written prompts. There is an obvious concern about job displacement with all of this, but how many people live to write emails? How much meaning does one get by spending hours debugging code only to find out what was missing was a semicolon? Wouldn't we rather spend our time on more meaningful pursuits, trying to understand the meaning of life and our place in the universe? These are the areas that large language models aren't able to compete with humans, and without a fundamental restructuring of their architecture, cognitive scientist and AI researcher Ben Gertzel thinks that they are never realistically going to be able to think like that anyways. Purely from a knowledge and research perspective, even though AI isn't intelligent enough to make decisions on its own, just being able to summarize large quantities of information will massively assist innovation in research. Combined with its teaching abilities, power to analyze large quantities of data, and ability to brainstorm, you have an information juggernaut on your hands that will revolutionize the way you learn and understand things. This even applies to the wisdom of the past. AI can help with the preservation and dissemination of human knowledge and cultural heritage. As our world becomes increasingly digital, there's a risk that important historical artifacts, documents, and any works of art may be lost or forgotten. AI can assist in the digitization, organization, and analysis of vast amounts of cultural data, ensuring that future generations can learn from and appreciate the accomplishments of those who came before. ChatGPT is fundamentally a language model, and has now been used to speak languages that are nearly extinct. This is absolutely vital to their preservation. In fact, ChatGPT was recently used to recreate native-sounding phrases from the Chinook jargon language, a Native American language that's almost extinct. Now, take a moment to imagine harnessing all these powers to solve the most dire problems that our civilization faces. Whether it's climate change, an asteroid impact, or another raging pandemic, or depleting energy resources, artificial intelligence can help with all of these. It can legitimately accelerate innovation, programmers can be more efficient, researchers can turn out more output, and the healthcare system can ease the pressure and be prepared for when it's really needed. I mean, looking at all of this, isn't it immoral to not embrace AI at this point? What inventions might a superhumanly capable artificial general intelligence make? Ask Ben Gertzel, referring to a machine similar to the one John Irving Good also imagined. Perhaps little things like curing cancer, death, and mental illness, solving climate change, space travel, mind uploading, cheap food, fusion energy. 
an era of abundance in which nobody has to work for a living, and people can focus on social, spiritual, artistic, and intellectual fulfillment. Or as AGI researcher Joshua Bach put it, there may be a 10% probability that people will die if we build artificial general intelligence, but there is a 100% probability that people will die if we don't. Especially you. Immortality may still feel like a distant dream, but companies like Emix are driving us toward it and reshaping what it means to be human. Today it's cutting edge treatment for a specific kind of cancer, tomorrow it could be all cancer, and then all diseases. Immortality truly is closer than you think.